Okay, uh, here we are again with the Sansui A60 back on my bench. Um, from when I finished off the video, um, I wrapped it up and then I took this amplifier and uh, installed it on my bench, or not my bench, my desk. My, uh, my desk with my computer and where I listen to music. And um, you know what, this amplifier sounds fantastic. It's got a really clear sound. It's pre uh, precise and uh, crisp, and it sounds really good. I'll tell you, I'm not I'm not pleased about the cabinet, but that's uh, that's a minor thing. But uh, I'm really pleased about how this thing sounds. It sounds good, but it developed a problem. Um, it kind of quickly developed a problem after a few days of listening to this, and um, I don't know if I can pick it up on the camera here. I'll try. I'm going to zoom in on the uh, display and then you can tell me if you can see what's wrong. Okay, I, I'm getting bad reflections here so I need to shut some lights off or something. There, I think that's better. Okay, what I'm going to do is switch it on and then you tell me if you see it. Did you see that? Here, let's do it again. Oh. It's got a bad power switch. It's arcing and um, you can see it's when I first click it on it does the freak out thing at first. Let's try it again. I hope you're picking this up in the camera. And then after the capacitor is charged up, I guess, it, it comes on full brightness. But um, looks like I'm going to have to put a new power switch in this thing. Um, I suspect I know what's wrong with it already. Probably somebody sprayed something into it. Um, cleaner, deoxid, uh, you name it. Any uh, Anything you spray into a power switch is going to kill it. So, boys and girls, do not spray anything into the power switch. Um, contact cleaner, anything like that. It doesn't need it. But uh, this has got to be fixed because uh, the way it's arcing, you can't really see it. You can't hear it, but you can see it. And then it takes a few seconds to power on. Okay, so if you want to confirm it, one thing you can do is put a voltmeter across the um, power switch, AC voltmeter. And I got it set to 300 volts AC so it won't go full scale. Plug it in. It's switched off right now, I believe. Yep. Plug it in. And I should see the line voltage across the switch, which I do. Uh, it's approximately 125 volts here right now. And I'll turn this on and watch the needle. And it didn't arc that time. Okay, let's try it again. Now it's behaving since I took the switch out. There we go. Oh, a little bit of fluctuation there. One more time. You see it twitching and you can see the light flashing. I don't know if you can see the light flashing here. I'll back up a bit. Okay, so you get the full picture. You see that? See how it hesitates? So as it's arcing, you can definitely see the voltage rising across that switch that's supposed to be closed. And then when the switch finally does make contact, the voltage drops to zero. So that switch is bad. Okay, so the unit's unplugged. Um, got the switch removed. And you can see it's a two-part switch. This part back here is all 120 volts AC. This part is low voltage signal and they're separate from each other. Um, so these are the two 
power wires going back to the fuse board and back to the transformer. And this part here attaches to these four pads. And as far as I can tell, they don't, it doesn't do a damn thing. Like when it's on, these two back pins are connected. When it's off, these two front pins are connected, right? So if you look at this board, the one front pin is not even connected to anything. And then pointing device. And the two back pins are already shorted with the, the, the copper trace. So I'm not really understanding why they did that. It makes no sense whatsoever. But I'll check this schematic anyway. Um, so this switch here uh, only has one side. This side is not populated with anything. You can see the slots are here for pins, but there's no pins. This is the only side. Sometimes you get a switch that has um, uh, contacts on both sides, and you can. Use, if this side's burned out, you can switch your wires to this side and use this switch. Or you can parallel them together and use both switches at the same time. It's another option. But this one looks like it's uh, just a single contact switch. And I'm going to see if I can find this. If I can't find it, I'm going to have to open this up and try and resurrect the contacts on this thing to make it work again. I don't think anybody sprayed anything in here. It's, it's possible they sprayed it into this switch thinking they were going to fix uh, something but uh, it might have flown in, flowed into contact. But you don't want to spray anything in these switches, nothing whatsoever, especially the power switches. Um, they have silver contacts, and uh, every time you cycle them, they, they wipe each other, the contacts, and they keep themselves clean. So you don't want to add anything in there that's oily or any um, other fluids that can wash things around and make a mess of things. So. I'm going to pull these two wires off. Actually, here, I'll just cut them. Pull them off after with the soldering iron. And uh, I'm going to see if I can hunt up the switch. This is an Alps snap switch N440 or N640. I can't read it, it's so tiny. N640. Doesn't say. doesn't say what it's rated for. Usually it's, it'll say 5 amps AC or you know something to that effect. You got to make sure it's, it's good for AC voltages and you got to make sure it's got to handle the current. We got a 4 amp fuse so we want to switch that's at least 5 amps or more. Um, you can't just put any switch in here because it just won't handle the current and the inrush current when you first turn it on. Okay so I'm going to hunt down a switch see what I can do. So what I've done is I ordered a new switches. They came in today new switches see these are just regular single pull single throw um, switches they're rated at 5 amps 125 volts AC um, 2 or 3 amps 2 amps at 250 volts AC and these are legitimate switches they got all the safety ratings and uh, they're not uh, garbage these are nice good switches and the main thing is the uh, physical dimensions of the plunger and the spacing of the holes. And um, this switch will be a, a direct fit for this this one, even though they don't look the same. Um, because I only need the two terminals. This is all that was used before. Problem is, this switch was connected soldered to the board and then it was mounted to the hole with one screw. Now if I put this switch in with one screw, you can see it will mount in there and it will be in the exact same position as before. Problem is, I only have one screw mounted that switch and then what it's going to do is it's going to, every time you push it, it's going to rock like that and it might break something. So I might have to figure out another method of build a little bracket or something that 
um, supports the other side of the switch as well so that both both of these ears are, are supported and then it's going to be solid. Okay so here's the headphone board installed in this position and that's where it's going to rest and then I have the switch in its position where it's going to rest. Now I think you can see why I need an extra bracket because uh, if I operate the switch see how it moves yeah you don't want that switch moving at all because eventually the wires will break or the mount will break um, because it's flexing too much and just from cycling it on and off like that it will eventually uh, snap so I'm going to secure it on this side too so that switch is nice and solid when I uh, operate it. So what I did is I made up a little bracket out of sheet metal, a 12 millimeter hole here and I've, what I think that's a 3 mil or 4 mil hole, I, whatever it needs for the hole. And then there's the spacing between the holes is 19 millimeters. Pretty, pretty darn close. But I still have to massage this uh, to fit because, uh, let's see, this goes here on this so like it's hitting here so I'm just gonna have to trim this metal back uh, just to keep it keep it from banging into things and so I'll uh, trim this up and I'll get it mounted and I'll show you what it looks like once it's finished okay there it is I got the bracket installed and uh, it's connected to the switch the switch is screwed down by two screws And already it's solid and I'll just put the headphone board steel washer and a steel nut Okay, just snug this down. You don't want to go crazy because it's a steel nut on plastic threads. Just, just snug, snug it up. And I'll show you what the other side looks like. From the other side, you can't see in there. Let me get the camera. Maybe you can see that in there. So, heat shrink on both connections, you always heat shrink, and uh, there it is, it's replaced. I'll just to reattach this board, and then cover it up and we're done. It doesn't move at all when you hit the, operate the switch, it's rock solid. That's what you want, you don't want that switch flopping around. Alright, put the tops on and we're done.